Hey what's up Thick Boy Nation to all my King K. Rool fans out there and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to play King K. Rool against sword fighters. Now this is probably one of the most discussed topics with King K. Rool because King K. Rool is he's alright against sword characters but there's a way to beat him and I'll talk about the strategy on how to beat the majority of sword characters in Super Smash Bros Ultimate. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to discuss when fighting against sword fighters as King K. Rool is that you want to have a certain mindset. The mindset you want to have when playing against these sword fighters is two ways. Depending upon who you play against, depending upon what sword fighter it is, you can either fight up really close or you can use your crown and your cannonball to keep them away. So King K. Rool, luckily, unlike most heavyweights, has range with his crown and with his neutral being, being his cannonball. So there's two play styles you can have against certain sword fighters. So if you're, if you're up against a character like Roy where he needs to be up close and personal, th those are the type of sword fighters you want to space out mainly. And then against characters like for instance Marth, you want to be in his face. Or against Lucina, you want to be in his face. But Lucina's sword has all around damage whereas Marth deals the most at the tip. So against your Marth and against your Shulks, you, you want to be in their face. Like you don't want to give them any breathing room. So then you all may be asking, well, how is this done? How, how do I play against this type of playstyle against sword fighters? So with King K. Rool, King K. Rool, as you already know, he's a very thick boy. He's very large, so he falls into a lot of combos. But against sword fighters, there's a certain strategy you have to have. Number one, I, I highly suggest that you master parrying. Parrying is crucial against sword fighters, especially against characters like Ike, against your Krom, against your Roy. They are going to nair on you all day every day and if you parry that into a side tilt or into an up tilt a very quick attack with king k rule preferably side tilt especially if you parry them and they go for like a cross up where they go on one side of you with the nair and then they end up on the on the other side that's when you get the parry off right and then you go for the side tilt or you go for up tilt um i prefer side tilt a side tilt has an option to kill especially if it's near the ledge but against your Ike, against your Roy, against your Krom, they're going to narrow on you 24-7. So you want to be prepared for that, especially against forward air as well from Krom and Roy. Now, Krom and Roy's forward air, I I usually, whenever, whenever I go against that, I usually just go for a counter instead of going for a parry against that. But there's, there's different ways you can handle that. And then we also have Super Armor, which I'll touch upon a little bit later. One of the main strategies you want to have against Krom and you want to have against Ike, and this can also work on Mars. But against Martha's strategy can be kind of situational, but every single time force them off stage and then go for your counter because with Marth and with Ike and then with Krom, they have up B's where they deal damage, especially Marth. Marth pokes through the stage and against Krom and Ike, they always have to go up and then down. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either counter the hitbox from when they go up or counter the hitbox from when they go down. It depends upon how they're going to grab the ledge. And that's all for up to you to determine. So whenever they go for the ledge, you counter that. And the ways that you can force them on stage, of course, is with back throw. And this is why I prioritized earlier saying parry into side tilt is really good because the side tilt will also force them off stage. So those are a couple of options that you have against your sword fighters. And especially since you know that Ike and Krom have exploitable recoveries, this is the strategy you always want to go for. Force them off stage, try to get that counter on their upbeat. And with Ike, you can also counter his side B when he's coming towards you. If you jump off stage and counter, or you wait for him to come, come towards you, and then you just counter instead of just shielding the side B. Okay, so there's three basic things that you have to remember when playing against Ike, Krom, and Roy. You want to space them out. You want to get those parries off, especially against neutral air and especially against their cross-ups, okay? And then once you have all of those set down, you want to play platforms. So the reason why I say you should play platforms, especially against... Ike, Krom, and Roy. I know mo against most sword fighters, you actually don't want to play on platform stages, but here's the advantage you have. Thanks to the ability that Neutral B has, Neutral B can fall through platforms, so you can fall through platforms on using Neutral B. This allows you to mix up where the cannonball is going to be placed, right? And then you have Crown Bouncing. So I'm not sure if any of you have heard of the tech Crown Bouncing, which is a tech that I cover on this channel that was created by DK Davey, and he put, made a whole video about it, and I also covered it on my channel. But basically, how Crown Bouncing works is a tech where if you have your crown, let's say your crown gets stuck on a platform right you can grab the crown and then crown bounce which basically allows you to turn in midair it's basically a dash dance in midair and it allows you to quickly use an attack after that 
and it's a really good technique. So this can be utilized a lot against your Ike and against your Crom's and Roy's because you can even cross up them with crown bouncing. So there's all sorts of options that you have here. And this is why I say you should play with platforms against these type of characters. What you don't want is for them to be able to juggle you on these platforms. So it really depends upon what you're best at. If you're best in playing with platforms, if you're okay against playing against a sortie on platforms, especially your main sorties who would like to fight in close, it really depends upon personal preference. For me, I know that this strategy with platforms can be good in certain situations, but for me, I prefer Final Destination more spread out where I have range to use my crown, to use my cannonball, and to keep them away from me. And then when the opportunity comes, I can punish them with like down smash or any other kill option that King K. Rool has. Okay, so now that we've talked about the up close and personal sword fighters, it's time to talk about the zoning sword fighters. So those are gonna be your Shulk, your Marth. I'm gonna put Cloud in this category as well, and also Lucina. The reason why I wanna put Cloud and Lucina is because characters, like, people are starting to play those characters as if they're zoners as well, especially Cloud ever since Zero's been like spacing people like crazy with Cloud's back air. So I, I kinda wanna put Cloud in that category as well. and. These characters, now you're going to be the up close and personal character. Remember, you're a heavyweight, so you can deal some pretty decent damage up close. It's all about how you use it, though. And the thing about King K. Rool is that he is a very complex neutral, and in these types of situations, you want to stay in their face, especially against Marth. I'm going to use Marth as mainly the prime example here. So Marth and Lucina have access to neutral B. Neutral B can break shields. It's very situational. Most people don't use it, but you want to keep it in mind because it can happen. And against these characters, you're gonna see a lot of forwarder and a lot of nair. And this is when reads really come into play. Because here, you wanna figure out, okay, so when is this person gonna go for forwarder? When are they gonna go for neutral? Against Marth, he's gonna go for forwarder a lot. Why? Because he wants to keep you away so he can get tipper damage and he can get tipper kills, right? So, if you stay in his face, and your main objective here is to get grabs. A lot of people underestimate King K. Rool's up throw. King K. Rool's up throw is his highest damaging throw, and on the top platform, it can kill relatively early, but you're not gonna play against Marth on platform stages in most situations anyways. But here's what you need to do with up throw. You wanna get Marth to a percent where he can die from most situations, like from a down throw into up tilt. That's where you wanna force Marth, and you wanna keep him up close, personal, do a lot of grabs, do a lot of jabs, but have a set distance where Marth can go. Keep him on a leash. Don't let him get go too far where he's on the other side of the stage where you have to approach him. And against Marth, if you ever get in a situation where he's really far away from you, this is when you want to prioritize Crown. Throw Crown because he either has to shield Crown or he has to jump over. He has to respect Crown in, in some way, shape, or form. And if you come into an instance where you end up losing your crown, remember you have crown bouncing, you have crown, you have crown squatting, which I'll put up I cards to the crown bouncing and crown squatting video right now. So basically, really what you want to do is you want to use that crown, stay up and close and personal, you want to use jab, and when you're in neutral against these characters, as I said, when you use your crown, if you end up losing your crown, you either want to crown bounce off of it or crown squat. If it's on a platform, you preferably want to go for a crown bounce. Or if you lose your crown in, in a situation where the, the sortie gets it and you don't have it, you want to play defensive as crap until they either throw the crown at you, you shield it and you pick it up, or you go all offensive and try to get it back. What you don't want to get into is a situation where Marth is forward airing you like crazy. You're off stage. He has your crown. He Z drops it on you and then you die. That's the situation you don't want to get into. So you got to remember that Marth and Lucina are aerial dancers. They will dance on you in the air like crazy with their aerials. Your biggest thing is parry it. Don't abuse shield because then you'll get killed with neutral B. And Marth and Lucina are experts at shield poking. So those are your basic strategies you want to have against your Marth Lucina, against your Shulk, and against your Cloud. You have to be very careful because these characters can deal hefty amounts of damage, especially Shulk and Buster. The reason why I say that is because you can get your gut armor broken. So prioritizing gut armor is not really a thing you want to use against Shulk and against Cloud. If Shulk's in Buster or if Cloud is just doing straight up crazy damage with like forward smash and stuff, don't prioritize gut armor, you'll get your stomach broken and then 
you'll be in a bad situation. Against Cloud, respect his back air. Against Shulk, respect his mix-up. Shulk is one of the most dynamic characters in the game, and that's exactly why I lost this game, which is being shown on the screen right now, is that I'm not respecting the fact that Shulk has a crazy amount of mix-ups, and he can pull out things just straight out of nowhere, and you won't expect them. So, in, what, 99% of the situations, you're gonna see some crazy mix-up from Shulk mid-game, or against Cloud, you're going to get spaced. So what's going to happen? If you get spaced by Cloud, you have a couple options. You have Crown, in which you can throw your Crown, right? Crown deletes Blade Beam, and also Crown Squatting is an amazing play against Blade Beam because Crown Squatting gets rid of the pickup animation from the Crown. So you'll be able to throw the Crown again. Against most Clouds, this is exactly what they'll do. They'll shoot a Blade Beam, and they see you come towards you, they jump. They either jump because they're going to go for a raw back air or they're going to go for a neutral air because they want to keep you away. They can charge their limit. When they charge their limit, then they engage in combat. Only use Cannonball against Cloud to edge guard him. You never really want to use Cannonball in neutral because he's either going to be throwing out blade beams or he's going to be charging limit in neutral. So the same rule applies when against Ike and against Krom. He doesn't snap the ledge when he uppies. So you counter his uppie, force him off stage, he's not going to get back. He's just not going to get back. His recovery is not strong enough. Not unless he gets Limit, in which in most situations against Limit, since Limit, Cloud is faster, he's also heavier with Limit. So here's the things you want to do against that. If he has Limit and he's holding it, remember he only can hold it for around 15 seconds now, which means he's going to get rid of it at some point. You either have a couple options. A, you counter his Limit Cross Slash. Or B, if he's sitting in neutral a lot, he's probably going to use a limit blade beam, which you reflect that with your down B. Or C, you make sure that he burns out his limit by forcing him off stage and making him have to use his up B to recover. There's actually a fourth option against Cloud and Limit Break because it's it's very risky and it's probably one of the scariest options ever. But when you're against Cloud, you can actually just zone him out, especially with neutral B and with side B. Zone him out, keep him away from you, stand on the complete opposite side of the stage and let him come to you. That way he's either going to have to force his limit and use it very forcibly or he's just going to lose it. Because remember, he, it only lasts 15 seconds, so you just wait it out until he loses that limit and then you go back into your forceful state where you're in his face dealing all that damage. Okay everyone, that's going to end in today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, or subscribe. If you want to join the King K. Rule Discord, the official King K. Rule Discord, and you can see me in that Discord as well because I'm part of the lab team, there's a link to that in the description and there will also be a link to that in the comment section as well. So make sure you check that out. And if you want to follow me on Twitter or on SoundCloud, a link to those two will also be in the description since I post Nintendo mashups on SoundCloud. You may enjoy some of that content because I post Nintendo content on here with Super Smash Bros. Anyways, my name is Phantom Phoenix and I'll see you all next time on Dark Sparks Gaming. <laughs>